the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard of arjuna's conquest of the nibata kabacha demons we also heard how yudhishthira rescued bhima from the deadly embrace of the giant snake nahusha after spending the monsoon and autumn seasons in the bishakha yupa forest the pandavas moved back to the kamyaka forest to spend the rest of their exile one day krishna along with his wife satyabhama came to the forest to meet the pandavas draupadi rushed to him and asked krishna tell me how are my sons doing do they miss me krishna smiled and said Don't worry Panchali your sons are doing fine and growing up to be the worthy descendants of the Kuru dynasty they are mastering the skills of archery and warfare they receive lessons in horse riding and chariot driving from my son Pradyumna and my nephew Abhimanyu your father king Drupad and your brother Drishtadyumna have invited them several times to stay with them in Panchala but they prefer to stay with us in dwarka subhadra is caring for them just as you'd have done and trying her best to fill your place in their hearts krishna met yudhishthira and said o king the yadava army is at your disposal if you want you may attack hastinapur now and destroy duryodhana any time you want or if you wish you can continue your exile while the yadavas conquer hastinapur and wait for your return yudhishthira bowed in front of krishna and said you are our friend philosopher and guide i know we would get your help whenever needed we have almost completed the 12 years of our exile and have only one more year to spend in hiding after that we will come to you and seek your help till then let us continue our journey krishna decided to spend some more time in the kamyaka forest with the pandavas and his best friend arjuna one day the great rishi markandeya arrived in the ashram rishi markandeya was more than a thousand years old but he looked like a handsome young man of no more than 25 the pandavas received him with due respect after having a good meal markandeya sat under a tree while the pandavas gathered around to listen to his wisdom Yudhishthira said O great rishi you have experienced a lot in your life we wish to hear from you about the mysteries of our world please enlighten us Markandeya then narrated the story of Manu the son of king Bibaswana After inheriting the kingdom from his father Bibaswana Manu went to Badrika ashram and engaged in a strict penance for a thousand years sitting on the river bank One day a small fish swam close to Manu and said please save me from the big fishes in the river they will eat me if they catch me Manu felt pity on the fish he gently picked up the fish and released him in a pot of water he named the fish matsya 
Matsya began to grow larger and larger, and soon he outgrew the pot. Manu then released the fish in the lake. The fish kept on growing, and one day the lake was too small for him. Manu then released him in the river Ganges. Soon Matsya grew so large that the river also did not have enough space for him. He said to Manu, Lord, I, I cannot move in this river. Take me to the ocean and release me there. Manu arranged to drag the mighty fish through the river Ganges towards the oceans. After a long journey, they arrived at the estuary of the river. Freed from the bounds of the river, the happy fish Matsya swam into the open seas. As Manu was about to leave, the giant fish swam back to Manu and said, You have protected me all my life. Now it is my turn to pay you back. Listen to me carefully. A great flood will soon engulf the earth and submerge everything around you. Nothing can escape this disaster. Build a strong boat and a strong and long rope. Carry with you the seeds of life needed to repopulate the earth. Then, with the seven rishis, board the ship and wait for me. When the time comes, I will come to save you. The fish bade goodbye and dove into the deep ocean. Manu knew that Matsya was no ordinary fish and took his advice with all due seriousness. He built a huge and strong boat. He wove a long and strong rope. Then, with the seven rishis, he boarded the boat and waited for the great flood to strike. Manu didn't have to wait for long. The fish was right. A huge flood engulfed the earth and submerged everything in sight. The waves carried Manu's boat as it tossed and turned in the tumultuous water. Manu panicked. He called for the fish. Matsya, where are you? Save us from our impending death. Soon, the huge fish surfaced in front of the boat. Matsya had grown a long horn on his head. Manu tied one end of the rope to the horn and the other end to the hull of the boat. The giant fish pulled the boat and took them out to the open sea. The entire earth was submerged and all land animals perished. Only Manu and the seven rishis survived. After floating in the oceans for several years, the waters began to subside. Matsya took Manu near the Himalaya mountains where some of the peaks were now visible above the water. As per Matsya's instructions, Manu tied the boat to one of the peaks. The fish then said, Manu, I am Brahma, the creator. I have taken the form of a fish to save you from the flood. Now it is your duty to repopulate the earth. Saying so, the fish disappeared. Manu and the rishis then began their arduous task of rebuilding and populating the earth from the seeds they carried. After many years of strict austerities and with Brahma's blessings, they succeeded. The earth was again filled with humans and other living creatures. Markandeya then told Yudhishthira about the system of celestial calendar. One celestial year equals to 360 earth years. The Satya Yuga or the age of the Satya runs for 4,000 celestial years followed by the Trita Yuga which runs for 3,000 years. Next comes the Dwapar Yuga, 
which runs for 2000 years the final age is the kali yuga which takes 1000 years taking the transition period between the yugas into account one cycle of four yugas take 12000 celestial years to complete and 1000 of these yuga cycles constitute one day of brahma then comes the night the period of annihilation during this time no life exists and the universe stays submerged in a primordial fluid markandeya said once during this period of universal destruction while i was alone floating in the eternal ocean i had this wonderful vision i saw at a distance a young and divine looking boy sitting under a banyan tree the boy's skin was blue and his eyes were like lotus petals he called me and said dear markandeya you are tired live in my body and get some rest he opened his mouth i entered his body through his mouth and inside i found a whole world full of people animals birds rivers mountains meadows cities and forests for more than a hundred years i roamed inside his body but i couldn't reach its end i cried for help and suddenly i was thrown out from his body through his mouth i found the divine boy sitting on a tree branch he smiled at me and said markandeya i hope you had a pleasant stay in my body i held my head to his feet and said lord whoever you are i pray to you please reveal yourself to me the divine boy said in the ancient days i named water as nara during the period of destruction the same water became my abode or my ayana that is why i am narayana several times i appeared before you as brahma for half of myself is brahma brahma is asleep now and as long as he sleeps i'd live here as a boy when this dark period ends and brahma wakes i would merge with him and begin to recreate the universe the sky the earth the planets and everything till then you rest in peace saying so he disappeared markandeya paused for a while and then said yudhishthira the divine boy whom i met during the time of universal destruction is none other than the man sitting next to you your cousin lord krishna with his boon i have an indestructible memory and i have the power to live as long as i wish take refuge in him and he will protect you forever hearing markandeya the pandavas bowed down to krishna and paid him their respect yudhishthira asked markandeya lord tell us how did king kubalashwa of ikshashu dynasty got to be known as dhundumar markandeya said during the time of the great destruction when the universe was only a great ocean of primordial fluid lord vishnu lay in a deep slumber on the floating body of the great serpent anantanaga from his navel grew a divine lotus and on the lotus lord brahma came to being lord brahma sat on the lotus and was in a deep meditation when two fierce demons madhu and kaitava attacked him scared of the demons brahma shook the lotus stem to wake up the lord vishnu opened his eyes and with a smile he welcomed the demons madhu and kaitava 
The demons laughed at him and said, We are in a good mood today. Ask anything you want and we will fulfill your wish. Vishnu said, To protect my devotees, I wish to kill you. Please, grant me my wish. Madhu and Kaitava said, Lord, we have always been virtuous. We never lie and we have always been generous to the weak. We will grant your wish. But we have a request. Kill us in a place that is uncovered. In return, we wish to be your sons in our next life. The Lord said, So be it. I grant your wish. Lord Vishnu searched the heaven and earth for a uncovered place, but he couldn't find any. Then he removed the clothing of his thigh. With his Sudarshan chakra, he beheaded Madhu and Kaitava right on his exposed thigh. Madhu Kaitava's son, Dhundu, had pleased Lord Brahma with his worship. Brahma granted him a special power that made him indestructible by the gods, demons, yakshas and rakshasas. Dhundu stayed hidden under the desert sand and slept for most of the days. Once a year, when this huge demon would blow his nose from under the desert sand, it would cause earthquakes for weeks. The burst of dust and sand would cover the sun and the earth would plunge into darkness. And when he woke up from his slumber, he would plunder the nearby hermitage of Rishi Utanka, killing his family members and disciples. Rishi Utanka prayed to Lord Vishnu and asked for help. Many years ago, pleased by Utanka's worship, Lord Vishnu wanted to give him a gift. Utanka refused to accept any saying that he was happy to see his Lord. No other gift was necessary. Lord Vishnu then promised to help him whenever needed. So bound by his word, Vishnu said, Utanka, I will help you destroy your enemy. Vishnu then entered the body of King Kubalashwa without his knowledge. Then Kubalashwa called one thousand of his sons, and his army and marched to the desert to kill the ferocious demon Dhundu. After digging the desert floor for more than a week, they found Dhundu's body. The noise of the army woke up the giant. The angry demon let out a huge roar and hurled fireballs from his mouth toward Kubalashwa's sons. The fire scorched the thousand sons and killed them instantly. Kubalashwa used his yogic powers and extinguished Dhundu's fire. Then he pulled out his divine weapon, the Brahmastra, and fired it at Dhundu. The weapon struck the giant and blew up his body in a huge ball of fire. The world was freed from Dundu's terror, and Utanka was relieved. Since then, King Kubalaswa came to be known as Dundumar, the slayer of Dundu. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bomek. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.